Uh, let me start recording. What's up, man? It's the Tariq Show, the Tariq Elite, the Tariq Nasheed Show. We're live right here on Ustream, as we do every Sunday night. Get my eyebrows together. Um, let me get my, my heater together. I got my heater in here tonight. It's kind of chilly in here tonight. That's why I said the African brown pump is hilarious. Yeah, that, that brother had some real deep lyrics on that song, didn't he? My dude had some deep lyrics. All right, man, so what's going on, family? Glad to have everybody tuning in. Ready to chop up good game as we do. No, 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 um, we're still moving. Now, we got a lot of boxes and stuff. Well, we, we're still moving into the new house. We're still getting that. This is, this is the same spot. But we're getting the new spot. Um, we're, we're moving as we speak. I <laughs> said, did Ola introduce me? Where is this? Ola in the room? All right, let me get some, because um, I want to go right into the game tonight, man. I want to get right into chopping it up. Let me see. I need some um, some mods in the house. Where is Ola? Where are my regulars? <clears throat> because I, the, the white supremacist, I'm going to start trolling because I'm going to talk about Cuba. What's up, Jazzy Noop? Okay, we got Natural Charm. I'm going to make Natural Charm a mod. I'm making Natural Charm a mod. You're a moderator, Natural Charm. Who else? Um, who else we got? Yeah, the trolls are out heavy. They've been trolling all day, especially on my... um. Someone said, "Play that at my wedding." Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get deep tonight. So I want to have you know the the room covered for the fuckery because we're gonna talk about Cuba Castro. What's up, Shea Butter Allah? <laughs> melanated THC. There we go. I'm gonna use melanated THC. You're a mod. Let me see. Where's Ola? Ola, you in here? I didn't see Ola's name. I don't see Ola's name in here yet. Now let me see. Who else we got? Yeah, where's Texas Lady? Love Jones 305. Is that you, Strife? Oh, there he is. All right, we got Ola. What's up, O? Make Ola a mod. All right, so Ola is a mod. Let me see who we else. Who else we got? I need one more. We got three. I need one more. So we can get it in without the butt hurt trolls coming in here trying to stop the flow. All right. Okay. All right, let, let's just get, get into the game. Where's Aki? I don't know. Aki, you in here? What's up, Champion Gear? All right. So, yeah, yeah. Shout, shout out to a lot of folks saw me on Russia today. I was on RT News earlier. I posted a link. It's on my Tariq Live page. Everybody, if you're not following me on YouTube, because I know you guys follow me on um, Twitter, Instagram and some of the other pages, but also go to my YouTube page, which is Tariq Live. Go to Tariq Live and and, and like the page, follow the page. So whenever I post the videos, you will automatically get the videos emailed to you. So follow me on Tariq Live. David King, there we go. We got to get David out of here. See you. All right. See, like this David King dude, got to get him out of here. All right. Come on, my, my mods. I made y'all mods for a reason. All right. All right. But yeah, a lot of folks saw the um, interview I did on Russia Today, RT News, and we were talking about the. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a very short interview. It was a short segment. But we're talking about, you know, the 
the global reaction to the death of Fidel Castro. For those who don't know, former Cuban leader Fidel Castro died the other day. He was 90 years old. And a lot of the Western media, people in the dominant society, are taking shots at him. And what's interesting with Castro, a lot of, especially here in the U.S., a lot of people, officials in the U.S. and the media and all that, they're mad because Castro outlived all of the people that were trying to go after him. See, the white supremacy don't like to take an L. And Castro <clears throat> has always been a thorn in the side of white supremacy. Yeah, and that's the thing. A lot of, I heard Kaepernick, they were mad at Kaepernick for having a, he had a Castro shirt. My dude Nas, Nas shouted out, you know, did an RIP to Castro and they tried to attack him. Don't let nobody punk you with that bullshit about attacking you for saying R.I.P. to um, Castro. Because Castro was a great ally to African people globally. Look, you surprised I know about Castro? Well, I got to know stuff about something, you know. Were there issues in, in Cuba that, that was questionable? There were challenges? Yeah. There were some black people jailed there. There's a lot of questionable things that happened that were not cool. But the overall picture of Fidel Castro, Castro was a great ally to African people. And when he died, you notice down in Miami, there was a lot of the white Cubans jumping up celebrating. See, the thing is, like I said, white supremacy don't like to take no L. They wanted to kill Castro. They've been trying to kill Castro since the 1950s, 60s, early 60s. They've been trying to kill Castro for the longest. Castro not only avoided every assassination attempt, they tried to people tried to assassinate that man. He had 638 assassination attempts on his life. We're going to break it down. We're going to break this whole shit down. This is why you got to stop listening to the Western media. This man had so many assassination attempts on his life, outlived all of them, died on his own terms. That man died in his tracksuit around his family and loved ones of old age. He outlived Eisenhower, Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, um, Nixon, Jimmy Carter, Reagan, all of them outlived all these dudes. Well, is Jimmy, is Jimmy Carter still alive? He might be alive still. I don't know. Not right now, Brian. We're not doing the Mac lessons questions now. We're talking about something a little deeper right now. But the thing is, pe people are on my Twitter right now, you got these suspected white supremacist Cuban Americans with this outrage, trying to reprimand anybody who says or points out that Castro did a lot of good for African people globally. They will sit up here and say, well, he was a dictator. He was a tyrant. He took away people's freedoms. And you notice that all these people down in Miami, these Cuban Americans, these white Cuban Americans, they're, they're, all the Cuban Americans that's celebrating just happen to be the white Cuban Americans. You don't see too many black Cubans or black Cuban Americans, not in large groups, running around celebrating the death of Castro. Now, why is that? Because the thing is, Look at the white Cubans and the suspected white Cuban Americans. Suspected white supremacist Cuban Americans are some of the biggest racists that you will ever want to meet. Let's keep it 100. They are some of the biggest racists that you will ever want to meet. I'm not talking about all white Cubans now. I'm talking about the suspected white supremacist Cuban Americans. Do you know 
while all these people are running up here talking about mistreatment, dictator, all Cuba, all Castro messed up Cuba with his dictation, dictatorship and he was a tyrant, 58% of Cuban-American voters voted for Donald Trump's ass. Do you know that? When they, when they show those polls talking about all those Latinos who voted for Trump, those are the ones they're talking about. Those white supremacist Cuban-Americans, they come over here and they fall right in line with white supremacy. They turn into the Marco Rubios, who's Cuban-American, by the way. Marco Rubio is Republican Cuban-American. They are, they are major Trump supporters. You better learn about these white Cuban-Americans. You better learn the real deal about them. They're the Latinos who are voting for Trump, dude. So they don't fall for that old, oh, man, we got to stand up to tyranny and dictator. They're fine with dictators and tyranny as long as it's happening to the black folks. They were fine with it here, and they were fine with it in Cuba. Don't let them run that game on you. That's why all you see are white Cubans down there in Miami. Hey, Viva, Viva. They, they're the ones happy and jumping up. Those white Cubans come over to Miami, they not only practice white supremacy against the black Cuban Americans that managed to get over here, but the black Americans they practice racism against. When they started Little Havana and all these little places out there, they got with the other white supremacists and started to funnel black people out of those service jobs out there in Miami. They shitted on those Cuban white Cuban Americans, shitted on black people in Miami, man. Ask black folks in Miami what the deal is about them. Don't let them run that, oh, we brothers, we brothers and minority brothers bullshit. They come over here and fall right in line with white supremacy. Ain't no brotherhood with them. Not only that, they are staunch Republicans for the most part. And they shit on black folks every chance they get. That's just real. So... They have this thing now where they're telling black folks, hey, uh, how could you like a dictator? He was racist. He was racist. No, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. In Cuba, Cuba has a history of racism. Let's get into the history of Cuba. Not only is there a history of racism in Cuba, there's a history of denying a lot of the African influence. Down in Cuba, one of the people who helped Cuba get its independence was a black dude named Antonio Maceo. Back in the 1800s, it was a black dude, Antonio Maceo. He was a freedom fighter, guerrilla warfare. He was one of the people that helped Cuba get its independence from Spain. It's clearly a black man. But these self-hating white supremacist Cubans, they go out of their way. Even today, when you see images of this dude, over the years, they've lightened him up. Antonio Maceo, they try to make him look white now. They lighten this dude up over the years. He was a, truly a black dude. Also, the United States, and this is another thing that kills me when the U.S. tries to, or well, the white supremacists in the U.S., because I don't like to blame a country because it's not the country that's racist, it's the white supremacists who are racist. But the U.S. occupied Cuba and they were going to create a caste system over there. Whites on top, blacks on the bottom, just like over here. They were going to do the same thing. And all of these white supremacists, Cuban-Americans, they were perfectly fine with that shit back then. They were fine with it. As a matter of fact, in the year around 1906, the government there, they were going to, they spent millions of dollars to bring in whites from Spain because they wanted to lighten up the population of Cuba. Because Cuba is mostly black. When you look at Cuba, when they show images or whatever, you see the white Cuban. But Cu oh, when you go to Cuba, most Cuba shit looks like Harlem. Cuba, mostly Afro-Cubans over there. That African strain, you see it everywhere. You see that everywhere. You, Cuba is a black nation for the most part. And the thing is, in around 1906, they had an immigration law where they were going to try to bring over hundreds of thousands of whites from Spain to kind of blend in and mix in and, and get that African gene up out of there. But it, 
it, it didn't quite happen the way they wanted it to happen. So the U.S., they occupied that, and they wanted to have a caste system, and they did have a caste system. Black folks under U.S. occupation, and when the U.S. put their puppet leader, Batista, when they put Batista in, it was a hellhole for black people. And not just black people, the poor whites, but they were fine with it. The poor white Cubans, they were like, well, shit, one day I get to live like the white elitists. So they had no problem with tyranny and dictatorship as long as the black folks were on bottom and the white elite were on the top. See, a lot of these people who fled Cuba, these were Batista supporters and these were the wealthy whites or the elitist whites. So when Batista was in power, they had no problem with the tyranny and all that other, no problem at all when black folks were getting their asses kicked over there exclusively. Got it? Not only that, when people talk about how fucked up society is, the mafia was controlling shit over there in Cuba. Go look at some of those Godfather movies. I think Godfather 2, they show how the, the mafia, and this was real shit. Some of these movies were showing the real deal. Uh, mafiosos like Meyer Lansky, they, had, they were going to turn Cuba into like a Caribbean Las Vegas. They had hoe houses down there. Oh, they were about to funnel drug. It was about to be just vice, vice, vice. It was about to be a hotbed of decadence out there. It was crime controlled. The U.S. had a, a, a racial caste system going. Black folks were getting shitted on. There was high infant mortality rate. Illiteracy was high. Poverty was rampant. When Batista was there as a puppet for the U.S. So let's learn the real history about, about Cuba. Nobody had a problem with that. When they talk about violence, oh, Castro was violent. Batista had a secret police unit called the BRAC. Look that up which was CIA backed. The CIA backed the secret police for Batista and they were torturing people in the streets. Anybody who went against Batista, they got tortured, killed, executed. Nobody ever talks about that. It's all, oh, Castro was the bad guy. Batista was worse. Don't let nobody fool you. But nobody says that though. And also let me tell you about Batista. Batista was a mulatto coon. Batista was a mulatto Cuban coon. He denied his Afro-Caribbean roots. He would always claim he's Spanish and Indian and all that, but he was a mulatto. And him being a self-hating coon mulatto who was a puppet for the West, for, for the U.S., he had no problem shitting on black folks because that would... That got him honorary status as much as he can get with the white supremacists. Not only was this dude such a, a mulatto coon, he got humiliated by the white elitists. There was a situation where Batista was the president. They had the Havana Yacht Club out there, which was an elitist club for white people. He was the president, and with all his power, he wasn't allowed in that club. Even as president of Cuba, they didn't allow him in the club because he wasn't white enough. They shitted on his ass and he was the president. He couldn't get into the Havana Yacht Club because his little black ass, little self-hating ass, wannabe white ass, wasn't white enough. So that was always something with him trying to get in with the elitists. So then comes Castro. Then the rise of Castro came. Castro said, no, fuck that. We're not going to have no racial caste system, no formal racism like that. When Castro came up, he said, look, everybody's going to get treated equal. For better or for worse. Everybody's going to get treated equal. That's when all the white people got the fuck up out of there. A lot of those white Batista supporters. Because they're like, wait a minute. Oh, now he's a dictator. Now, when the equal distribution of resources, wealth, everything else, class, everything else is going to go down, now he's a oh, evil dictator. But when Fidel Castro got into power, he illiteracy is damn near wiped out completely over there. Free education, the health care, free health care. Those are some of the healthiest people in the, in the Western Hemisphere over there in um, um, Cuba. Got a lot of people out of poverty. The whole shebang, too. This is not what they're, they're not going to tell you this. 
So he brought people all up on an equal level. He's like, no, we're not going to have a racial caste system here. Not a formal one. Now, there is still informal racism because anytime you have suspected white supremacists anywhere, you can't, you know, there are hardly any laws you can put down to make them stop practicing white supremacy. So you still have informal racism there. That ain't got shit to do with Castro. People just have their personal informal racist views. And they try to blame that on Castro the same way people try to blame racism on um, Obama. That silly shit. But the thing is, with, with Castro, he became a thorn in the side of the West because Castro helped, he was a great ally to a lot of black leaders and nations around the world. Not only was Castro cool with Malcolm X, when Castro came up, when he came to Harlem, you see pictures of him with Malcolm X because it was the black press that were the only ones allowed to come around him when he was in Harlem. So you see a lot of pictures of him with Malcolm X. He was cool with Malcolm. He was cool with a lot of the brothers and sisters in the Black Panthers. That's why they have Asada Shakur, who's down there now. Remind me to get more in depth about that later. But not only did he help American revolutionaries, Black American freedom fighters, he went over to Africa and helped liberate many African nations, and they don't tell you about that. When people like Patrice Lumumba rose up in the 1960s, you know, trying to be the leader of the Congo, and he couldn't get any support from other Western nations, and the U.S. had to get, get him up out of there because Patrice Lumumba, he looked at Haiti's, not Haiti, but um, Cuba's... Um, track record of Cuba getting with Russia and Patrice Lumumba said, okay, look, I, Patrice Lumumba went to the U.S. for, you know, to, to get allied help. They shit in on him. So he's like, well, I'm going to go to Russia. And the U.S. said, oh, wait a minute now. Patrice Lumumba, he wanted to go to Russia and they were like, no, we can't let Patrice Lumumba get Russia up in there because they need that cobalt. And understand this, cobalt, we, it's a mineral that's needed not just for cell phones and the internet and all that today, but even back then, they needed that cobalt for jet fuel. Cobalt was very important. And the only places where cobalt is is Russia and the Congo. So they didn't want, they couldn't go into Russia to get the cobalt. So they said, look, we got to get rid of Lumumba. So the CIA, they got rid of Lumumba. What is he doing up? He's going to give me, is that a booger in his nose? Okay, come here. Let me see him. Where's my tail? Let's my say goodnight. He starts going crazy. This is my... Hold on. Y'all will remind me. <laughs> we chop up game in one minute. Just taking a baby break. I see it's supposed to be sleep. This is my middle boy. He's... How old is this here? 18 months? Um, no. What is it? 16 months? <laughs> it's like 21 months. I mean, that's, yeah, that's what I mean. Wait, 21 months. He's almost 24. He's almost two. That's why. Okay. Okay. I get them mixed up. Okay. No, he's not 16. He'll he'll be two in February. He's tired. What's up, man? <laughs> yeah. This is uh, this is a seer. Oh no! Whoa! I lost my screen connection. Hold on. Hold on. They're both off the screen. They both crying. His TV's not no more. I took him out. <laughs> okay. Okay. I lost the screen. I lost the um stream, guys. You. Hold on. Refresh page. All right, Sierra, you need to be in bed, buddy. All right. Man. All right, let me let me chop up game. All right. What's up, man? You you're tired. You're tired, buddy. Okay, go to go to bed with mommy, man. All right, with your little pajamas on. Uh, there you go. All right, check him out. Yeah, he needs to go to bed. He's very tired. <clears throat> okay, why is this stream acting funny? Oh, yeah, Patrice Lumumba. He was um, a leader in Africa in the Congo. He was elected president there, and then he was killed. By, okay, fuck. Okay, hold on, man. This, is this shit going to act like this all night? Because I really want to chop up some good game right now, man. 
Uh, hold on, family. Because I really, this stream is going to act up tonight. Hold on. Refresh. Oh, <laughs> cry. He must cry. Oh, don't cry. Sia? <laughs> All right. All right. Bye bye, Siri. All right. But yeah, like I was saying, Patrice Lumumba, they got him up out of there. Uh, you say I'm chopping and freezing? Hold on. Re refresh page. I really hope the stream don't be messing up in the new house. Now, refresh page. All right. Refresh the page. Okay, I see we got some white supremacists in here. We got Scorp Loke. We got some white supremacists in here. And Chris, earlier this year, yeah, they all that stuff about them demanding. Uh, and, and that's another thing. Y'all refresh your page? Okay. All that stuff about them demanding Asada Shakur, that's not going to happen. For those who don't know, Asada Shakur, she was a, um, a black freedom fighter. And there was a situation where, you know, I think she was targeted by race soldiers and somebody got shot and they tried to blame the shooting on her. Okay. Okay. Hold on, man. Hold on. Okay. Hold on, man. Because I'm still recording. Hold on one second. Okay. All right, guys. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. All right. Everybody refresh your page. Hopefully this will work. Refresh pages. All right. So everybody refresh your page. All right. Okay. We're back. All right. We are back. Now, hopefully we're good. We're good. I, I just hate that first half didn't, you know, I got to edit that, edit that back in later. All right. How many people in the room right now? All right. All right. So we should be good to go. We should be good to go. All right. So like I was saying earlier, I was talking about how a lot of white Cuban Americans, they, um, a lot of them are Republicans. A lot of white Cuban Americans, they come over and they have the same white supremacist views as every other white supremacist. Y'all notice Miami rapper Pitbull? Now, he's a white Cuban. Didn't Pitbull do something with the Republican convention at one point? Because I know he was a Republican. The rapper Pitbull. Didn't he do something at one of those Republican conventions? I'm going to get back on Africa in a minute. But didn't Pitbull, do, he did something with the Republican, some kind of performance with the Republican. Something he did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot of these people use black folks as they come up. You know, people like Kid Rock, who I can't stand Kid Rock. He's another one. They sit around black folks and come up all black folks and then get around white people and they fall right in line with white supremacy. Man. But the thing is, like I was saying, yeah, they might have an issue with Trump, but a lot of them voted for Trump. A lot of them white Cubans voted for Trump. And like, I, let me go back to Africa. I was talking about Patrice Lumumba and all that, and Patrice Lumumba, they had all that cobalt in the in the Congo, and Lumumba was about to, to partner up with Russia, and the U.S. said, nah, we can't have that. And people like Castro said, look, no, we, we're not going to let these brothers over here 
just get assassinated like that by Western powers. We're going to help them out. So a lot of African nations, they got assistance from Castro in, in Cuba. Let's go back to, um, let's fast forward to the 90s. When Mandela first became president of South Africa, the first person he thanked was Fidel Castro. The reason why he thanked Castro is because Castro sent in troops over there to assist the black people over there with apartheid. It was Cuba and Castro that helped in form a formal apartheid in South Africa. They don't like to tell you that in the media. Also, what's up, Bartholomew? How you doing, fam? Also, it was Castro in Cuba that helped Angola get its independence. They also helped Namibia. They also helped Ethiopia fight a war and get those white supremacists off their asses over there. So the thing is, Castro helped out a lot of African nations, man, and a lot of folks don't talk about that in Western media. Yeah, Mandela said, your enemies aren't our enemies. Real talk. Real talk. That's how I am. That's how we got to be, black folks. We got this thing whenever white mommy and daddy tell us to be mad at somebody, we feel like we got to go jump on the bandwagon and act, act like they're damn bulldogs. No. I'm not about to shit on Castro. Castro helped a lot of black nations out. Not only that, Castro, during Hurricane Katrina, when the U.S. government allowed black folks to float up and down the fucking streets of New Orleans, during Katrina, dead black people floating up and down the street, black people screaming on TV, we need help, we're dying, we need help, for a week, and George Bush sat around giggling, looking stupid, it was Castro who said, hey, look. We can put our bullshit aside. I got doctors, man. I can send thousands of doctors up there to help the people. I'm willing to send doctors, medical supplies, anything to help those dying black people. The U.S. told him no. Look that up, man. Look that up. Not only that, there's a, a Castro made an offer, and that offer is still valid today where he offered poor black people, not just poor black people, just African-Americans. African-Americans, you can go down to Cuba and study medicine down there, become a doctor down there, absolutely free. Castro said, black Americans, come on down here to Cuba anytime you want to. We got free scholarships for you. You can study medicine for free. That deal is still valid today. They don't tell you about that, dude. We got to start listening to our own media, man. Yes. From what I understand, when I think when Huey P. Newton was down there in the 70s, I think that he studied medicine from what I heard. I got to verify this, but I know he was down there. And I think he studied medicine down there. And this is why many of the Black Panthers, you know, they had those free clinics and all that stuff. Look that up, man. I'm not, none of this shit up. Y'all don't hear this. Yeah, free scholarships to study medicine in Cuba. If you're black, are you a black American? They let you go down there and study for free. The Western media, don't they don't mention nothing about that. They don't mention nothing about that. They got some of the best doctors in the world down in Cuba, man. Not only that, do you know, not only... It was, it was Cuba that sent doctors and medical supplies over to Haiti. Whenever Haiti's having a, any kind of crisis, Cuba sends doctors over there to help the brothers and sisters in Haiti. Not only that, when those the, the Western powers put Ebola all over West Africa, it was Castro and Cuba who sent doctors over there to contain that damn Ebola. Look that up. They don't tell you that either. It was the Cuban doctors who went over there to fight Ebola because they knew what the deal was. They knew that the white supremacists were spreading that shit over there. Yes. 
Black people can go to Cuba now and study medicine for free. You can go to, to Cuba and study medicine for free. And, and, and Castro said, the only thing, we want you to go back, get this medical degree, and go back and help your people over there. That be sure to help, make sure you help your people. Meaning, he was like, don't get a, uh, don't get a medical degree and then become a coon. Go over there and help your damn people. You better research Castro and stop letting, stop letting the white supremacists tell you what the deal is. There's a reason why the white Cubans are running around. The reason why the white Cubans are mad is because the dictatorship is spread equally. That's what they're mad about. See, the minute somebody chomps down and tells somebody they can't do it, it's fine when it's somebody black. When it's black people and we're being told we ain't got no rights or we're being told we, we can't do certain things, well, you know, all lives matter, nigga. But the minute it hits people who are classified as white, all of a sudden, oh, wait a minute. This is tyranny. This can't go on. See, they don't take it for a minute. The minute it eases over to people classified as white, they get some of their freedoms taken, so to speak, or they're equal to the black folks. All of a sudden, oh, no privilege for me? Oh, no, this is, this, this is the dictatorship. This is wrong. Get the hell out of my face. Y'all can miss me with all that. You're going to throw darts at Castro because of him putting people in jail. Look at what's happening to black folks over here. Black folks are getting thrown in jail and thrown in prison over here. Well, in Cuba, people didn't have no rights. Black folks don't really have no rights over here. Miss me. The stuff that happens over there happens over here and worse. And people try to tell me, well... You can't be on the internet. You can't have an iPhone. Well, hell, over here in certain areas, you can't even walk around and be black or you'll get killed legally by race soldiers. They ain't killing people like that in Cuba. They ain't lynching people over there in Cuba. They're not shooting 12-year-old children in Cuba. So, yeah, miss me with that. I don't like selective outrage. I'm an all or nothing type of person. All or nothing. If there's going to be some dictatorship, everybody should get dictatorship. Or we're not going to have it, nobody should have it. I ain't with that. It's, it's cool as long as it's happening to the dark people. If it's happening to everybody else, oh, it has to stop. That's the same thing with Trump. See, let me tell you something. Trump has been shitting on black people for 40-something years. Trump has been shitting on black people for three, four damn decades. Trump has been getting sued for shitting on black people since the early 70s. Black folks have been telling y'all how most, much of a racist piece of shit Trump is for years. During the 70s, the 80s, and the 90s when he took out that ad against the Central Park Five, demonizing black people in the late 90s, he's getting sued for job discrimination of black people. His father, was a Trump, uh, his father, his, um, Trump, Trump's dad is Klan guy. So this man's whole life has been about racism against, against black people. Now that he gets elected and some of that racism and hate and vitriol is going to get to white women, gay white men, white Hispanics, white Muslims, now he has to be stopped. Miss me. Now that is going to be distributed equally. Now that that's going to be distributed equally, he has to be stopped. Just like with Castro. When Castro came in power, like I said, it's not going to be none of that Batista shit where you're going to have white elitists up here and black folks getting shitted on on the bottom. No. Everybody's going to get treated the same. All of a sudden, oh no. Castro is evil. So the thing is, man, we got to understand what the real deal is. Stop letting Western media tell you what the deal is. Stop letting them tell you what the deal is. 
And again, you notice if you look at social media, the only Cubans that's really in large numbers speaking out, out against Castro celebrating his death and all that are the white Cubans. And there, there's a reason for that. The black Cubans are like, you know, whatever, you know. It's cool. We cool. Because, see, the white Cubans know once they float over here, they get their way over here, they can start wallowing in white supremacy. You didn't say a lot of black Cubans, they're like, shit, if I go over there, I'm just going to see the same fucking discrimination. So, shit, I'm, I'm chill. If I go over there, I'm going to see the same damn discrimination. So, shit. At least I get a free education, free health care. I get to eat. You dig? But the thing is, and let me talk about the Asada thing. And I was talking about this earlier. Asada Shakur, she was accused of shooting a white police officer. Um, she went to prison. They broke her up out of prison. And then she went down to Cuba. And the Cuban government and Castro and those people, they've been protecting her for all this time. So a lot of people are concerned about the welfare of Sister Asada. And, you know, some of them have requested for her to be returned. They're not going to return her. They're not going to return her. You know why? I understand this. And, you know, they put her on like the, the terrorist list and that's, stop it. Stop it. No, no. They're not going to return her. They're not going to return Asada. Because there are Cuban terrorists that's being harbored in Miami right now. See, this is chess, not checkers. You have Cuban terrorists. Understand, they've been trying to kill Castro for years. Many of these people were U.S. CIA bat. So they ain't about to give up no Asada. All these people that didn't try to kill Castro. There's a terrorist, a Cuban nationalist. Again, they've gotten... Cuban nationalists who work for the CIA who carried out terrorist plots. There's one guy named Luis Corrales. I think that's his, yeah, his last name is Corrales. Luis Corrales. Look that name up. Luis Corrales. Luis Corrales was a Cuban, a white Cuban, Cuban nationalist who was co opted by the US CIA. And he carried out terror plots in Cuba against the people of Cuba. He blew up a plane, I think a Cuban flight, um, and killed like 73 people. So Cuba has been trying, the Cuban government has been trying to get at dude, but the U.S. has him down in Miami safe. He's still alive. Down in Florida safe. The U.S. is keeping him safe. But it's Luis Corrales. That's the name. So then they're, they're not going to give up no um, Asada. Asada was not a terrorist. That's why they tried to label her as a terrorist. Because the thing is, Cuba's like, hold on. You want Asada? You got a damn terrorist over there. You got terrorists over there now. We're not giving you Asada, and, uh, 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 a, a freedom fighter, and you got a damn terrorist who blew up people over here. You got them safe over there in Miami. You leave it? Okay, man. You unpack all your stuff? Yes. Okay, sweetie. You got your brother here? Love you. Love you to me too, Um, I don't have any money. I'll go to your wallet. All right, don't get a whole bunch of money out of my wallet, Jareel. All right, bye. All right, close my door, sweetie. Love you. Close my door. Close the other one. Thank you. I said love you. Love you. <clears throat> but, uh, but, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But with Luis Corrales, who's, let me, let me spell his name. Hold on, let me let me give you the right spelling of his name. Hold on. Let me give y'all the right spelling of his name. Hold on one second. Lu Luis Posada Corrales. Okay, this is the name. Hold on one second. That's how you spell the name, but it's Luis Corrales. And it was spoiled. Um, yeah, so Luis, he was he worked for the CIA, and again, he carried out for real terror plots 
and not terror plots, terrorist acts. So that's the reason why they made this whole thing about when Asada Shakur being a most wanted terrorist. And people were like, what the fuck are y'all talking about? What do you see, a terrorist? The woman ain't no terrorist. The woman didn't blow up no mass people or nothing. How is she a terrorist? That's why. Because they're trying to compare her to people like Luis Corrales and real terrorists that's being harbored in the U.S. So the thing is, man, don't, don't let people run that game on you about, about um, Cuba. Because, look, they, they don't say none of that stuff about Batista. Batista was fully backed by the United States government. That man shitted on the people there. He was a person who funneled all the wealth and resources to the elitists while the main population in Cuba was poor, sick, disenfranchised. And not only that, Batista, when when Castro came into power, Batista went into exile. He wanted to come to the U.S. because he had a house in Daytona Beach. The U.S. was like, no, nigga, you hot. You know, no. Nah. Now we don't now nah, we gotta cut ties with you. You're a little bit too hot now. The jig is up. No, no, we you collateral damage, nigga. So he took three hundred million dollars of Cuba's money and went over to Spain and lived in exile in Spain. They don't never talk about that. They talk about robbing people and Batista, the people they supported, his ass got three hundred million dollars, went into exile and chilled. He died in 1973. He died two days before. Castro sent some assassins over there to kill him. They were about to kill his ass, but he died. You dig? So there's a very interesting history, man, with, with Cuba. And again, don't let these people try to punk you. When they start talking about, hey, wait a minute, people don't have any rights and people are being mistreated. I, hey, look, what's happening over here? The same thing is happening to black people in America. Batista, did he take from Cuba? Good Lord. Yeah, he took from Cuba. He took $300 million. And they talk about Castro? So, yeah, they don't tell you all this, man. That's why Castro was such a thorn in the side of a lot of the Western powers, man. Because he helped so many African nations. He was, and that's the thing, we got to understand the difference between friends and allies. Again, there were some things done with some black folks in Cuba under Castro that I'm not crazy about. There's some shit I'm like, hey, that ain't cool. But. As far as an ally for black people globally in large numbers, how he helped African nations, I can only pop my collar to that. He's done more for African nations than any other, any Western power, period. Than any Western power. And the thing is, they couldn't control him. He wouldn't be their puppet. That was the thing. No, no, Che Guevara, they like to point out to some racist remarks he made at when he was a student. And that's what I'm going, that's what I'm talking about as far as friends and allies. He said some little slick shit when he was a student in college about black folks being lazy or some shit. But later on in life, he became a good ally. So I can work with an ally. I don't give a, you don't got to be my friend. You don't have to be my friend. But Che Guevara, he became a great ally. Ally in, in, in Hidden Colors, I think three or four, Brother Kaba broke down the importance of having allies. We got to understand friends and allies. See, we think we get with somebody and they're helping us and we think we got a friend for life. And no, 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 no. Sometimes that person's just a good ally for the moment. We got to understand how allies work. You can be friends with your allies, but understand there's a difference between a friend and an ally. Certain people you can use as allies and use that to your advantage. Black folks are going to have to learn that. See, we put emotion in the game. We put emotion in the game. Oh, he don't like me. He's a no, no. I can understand that. But if he's doing something that's going to help me against a bigger monster, 
I'll let him ally with me. Yeah. Friends, allies, enemies. The thing is, black folks, we're always being used as allies. Black folks, we are we get used as allies all the time, and we be think we're on some friend shit. The white feminist movement, they've always used black folks as allies and then dumped you after they got their deeds done. See, we don't understand that game. We so damn desperate for love and attention and some emotional gratification. They come around us hugging and kissing us. Oh, good. The feminists, yeah, women's rights, women's rights. And then after they get their women's rights and we're like, hey, where's where my sister in the struggle go? They dump your ass. Just like with these fake damn white supremacist Latinos who practice white supremacy, these white supremacist Latinos come over and ally with us. They say, I am a minority. Like he, I am a minority. Give me a check. I'm a minority. And then they get all the benefits you're supposed to be getting and then turn around and vote for Trump on your ass. See, we don't understand the game. We got to start using people as allies. Yeah, Che probably said some, he said some little slick shit, but he went over and they brought it in troops to Africa and helped liberate some of those African nations. So I can rock with them on that. I can rock with them on that. Yeah, I think it is. So this is why it's important that we got to learn, black people, that we have to start learning how to reach out with other nations. Yeah, that, that's real true. Truth reigns, because a lot there's a lot of shit that goes on globally in the global international sector that black folks are just not privy to. Yeah, the Mario Boatlift and the Mario Boatlift is something that they showed in the Scarface movie where they got a lot of people. You know, a lot of these people, I think they were Batista supporters who were in jail. And a lot of people in jail, they just shipped them all off to Miami. That's what the Scarface movie is based on. Yeah, Che Guevara, he wanted to fight in the Congo and unify Africa. Because again, they wanted strong allies too. You know, Cuba, they wanted to, to see some of these African nations liberated so they could have allies for resources and, and be able to trade and all that stuff, too, which is cool. We need allies. We need allies. Who's trolling in the room here? Hold on. But we got to understand when an ally has pretty much got what they need out of us in, in trying to slide us to the left. Okay, I'm trying to see if Ola... Ola, you still in here? Because I want to make you a mod again. I think when I started over, that demodded everybody. We're in here deep. A lot of people in the room. But yeah, they don't like to talk about how the um, Cubans helped liberate so many African nations, man. <clears throat> Wait, what did Gloria Estefan say? What'd she say? Gloria Estefan celebrates Castro's death with emotional message to fellow Cubans that hope is that hope is renewed. She shares photos of migrants leaving on a raft. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the white Cubans are really celebrating. They are really, really happy with that, and, and with that contradictory ass bullshit. And you, you always check them if a, if a white Cuban tries to reprimand you for pointing out the things that Castro has done for Africans globally. Just say, okay, well, why the hell are so many of you voting for Trump? 
You dig? Don't sit up here and get me to throw darts at your dictator. And you sit up here voting for my dictator, the person who wants to harm people who look like me, and you voting for him. You voting for damn Trump, who has an alt-right white supremacist up in the damn White House, who's going to have that. And you got Klan members supporting this dude. And I'm supposed to sit up here and throw darts at Castro for you? But you're voting for Trump? Don't let them wiggle out of that because they'll try to lie. Though it, most, most Latinos actually vote Democrat, but the ones who vote Republican are the majority of Cuban Americans. Those are the ones who vote Republican the most. And most of them voted for damn Trump. Don't Google that if you think I'm bullshitting. So nah, 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 nah. I'm not about to sit up and throw darts at, at Castro for you. If, if dictatorship and tyranny is bad, it's bad for everybody. Not just bad when it hits you because you think you got more privilege than the Negros. Nor Cali, have you been listening to the show? Nor Cali, did you, uh, he, this nigga just asked me, why do I think white Cubans are happy? He must have just gotten in the room. I, I just talked about this for literally an hour. He said, I thought Cubans were cool. Look, I'm not shitting on all Cubans now. I'm not shitting on all Cubans at all. There's some Cuban Americans that's cool, but you got some white supremacist Cuban Americans. Let's be clear. I'm not talking about all white Cubans, but you got some white supremacist Cuban Americans. Based on what? Based on facts. Based on the way that some of the white supremacist Cuban Americans treat other black Cubans when they get over here to Miami and the way they treat black people in Miami. Also, the way the white supremacist Cubans treat other Cubans in Cuba. There's still informal discrimination against black Cubans in Cuba by the white Cubans. And it ain't got shit to do with Castro. Let me say that again, because they like to talk about racism and all that. There are black people in Cuba, the Afro-Cubans, who still get shitted on by the white Cubans, and it has nothing to do with Castro because it's an informal, it's not legalized. It's an informal racism that's still there because they want to be white supremacists. That's why they want to get over here so bad so they can fully practice their white supremacy and privilege and all that good stuff. Let me see who's on the phone here. What's up? Who's calling? Uh, uh, uh. Hey. Hey, what's up, Tariq? What's up? What's up? Well, what's I got up? a question. Go ahead, fam. How you doing, man? Um, I want to know, like, um, what should you young brothers do to, like, because, you know, I used to be, like, into, like, you know, Jordans and all that stuff like that. You know, I'm kind of getting a little older. Like, yeah. what should we invest our money in? And also, how could I go about, like, representing myself in a professional way? Because I'm getting stuck, like, saying nigga all the time. Um, it's like I'm kind of stuck in the game, and stuff, you know? So you, you know, I missed the last part. Now, the last part you were saying, what now? Like, how do you, like, represent yourself in a professional manner? It's like, like I'm, I'm kind of stuck, like, in the streets. It's like, I'm always, like, just using, like, a lot of cuss words. I'm always saying, like, nigga a lot. You know, like, just to represent myself more professionally is what I'm saying. Okay. Like, how can I go about that? Okay, just choose to say, okay, when I get around some people that I'm supposed to handle business with, let me talk like I got some damn sense. And you get sense by studying and reading and learning how to articulate yourself. And when you want to handle business, you got to start dressing better. Dress, you know, the old cliche, dress for success. If you're trying to handle some business, dress like a nigga who's going to handle some damn business. There's a time and place for everything. Um, see, black right. folks, especially black men, we, we, we're taught to play all the time. And there's a time for some serious damn business. We're taught to walk around in our Jordans, um, play right. basketball, go to the turn up, um, smoke, drink, drink lean, all that stupid shit. And that has to stop. How old are you, by the way? I'm uh, 26. 26. Yeah, man. So right now you're about to be 30 pretty soon. So the money you should get, man, fuck all that spending your money on Jordans and all that nigga shit. It's time to start looking at real estate. You need to start looking at, okay, where can I get some money and put it where it's going to grow? Right now, you're at that age where it, it's all about planting seeds. 
so that you can live off of when you get in your 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s. That shit starts in your 20s. Let me tell you something. I wrote my, my best-selling book, The Art of Mackin, in my mid-20s. You dig? Now, I'm 70 years old right now. I just look fucking young. I'm old as shit. But I can still live off that book. That book brings me a check every month for a couple of thousand dollars. I don't even have to do shit. If I just wanted to be a low-key nigga and just chill, I can live off my first book. Uh, I can live comfortably off my first book. And that's all about planting a seed. You got to plant the seed and start do investing now. See, we think we want that quick turnaround shit. We see somebody else shining. We want to shine the next day. And we don't want to put in the work and put in the investment of shining. So you got to invest, man. You got to start laying the seeds down now, right when you're 26, because you got the energy, you got the youth, you got a lot of opportunities that's available for you, man. So start finding something that you can invest in now that's going to return um, a profit for you for years to come. You feel me? Right. Sometimes I just feel, I feel like lost, brother. Like, like whoa, what a star sometimes, you know? Yeah, but hey, get off that shit. Get off that lost shit. I just gave you some basic shit. Just start thinking, looking within yourself and saying, hey, what can I do creative to start planting seeds? All right, thanks for the call. Okay. All right, I ain't about to listen to this nigga whine because that's another thing. That's another thing because a lot of brothers, they don't really want no game. A lot. He sounded like he was about to do something called the whining game. A lot of niggas just want to sit around and have somebody to whine to. And I ain't in that business either. Not going to do that. Because I have a lot of dudes who sit up and say, hey, man, I, I want to do this, I want to do that. And I tell them what to do. But yeah, man, I don't really, I don't know, man. And now you whining. You want somebody to sit up and listen. That's some shit niggas get from their moms. That's some shit that dudes learn from being around single mothers. Guys got to cut that out. Let's cut the wine business out. You don't want to be no whiny nigga. So you sit up and watch your mom whine about shit, complain about shit for attention, and not do anything to really empower herself. Man, he's no good man. Your daddy, your daddy don't be giving me no money for food. I ain't seen your dad in two years. He over there with that other bitch. And he got them other kids. He taking care of them other kids. And you you listen to shit like that all your fucking life. And as a man, you start doing the shit. You, man, I don't know, man. I don't try. I don't know. You start sounding like the single mother complaining about niggas in her life. You dig? I'm going to have to do a show on wine and niggas. I'm going to have to do a whole show on that, man. You dig? That's a good question. How do you know which lawyers we can trust? So a lot of times you just kind of look at the reviews they get. You always try to look at reviews because I've had some janky damn lawyers. Now, my main, I got a couple of lawyers now. My entertainment lawyer, he's very thorough. He's a well-respected dude in the industry. And, you know, you got to have different lawyers for different things. You got, um, you know, I got a real estate lawyer. Um, we got a criminal lawyer. You got to have that criminal lawyer, entertainment lawyer, um, business lawyer. So you got to have different ones. Let's see who else we got. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's going on, Tariq? What's up? Who is this? Hey, this is not G from New Jersey. Um, it's three things I wanted to touch on real fast. Cause, yeah. um, I, I've been um, very interested in Cuba. Yes. From, um, reading books on Che, and I read a book on Fidel. So um, it's three things. Um, I read a book that was called The uh, Real Castro. Yeah. And um, from Castro's perspective, dealing with immigration, the United States would make it harder for Cubans to legally go through the immigration channels to get to the United States. So they would encourage Cubans to escape illegally. Mm. You know what I'm saying? To make it seem like, you know, um, you know, Castro is, is, is keeping his people down, you know, right. pressing them. And they're escaping. But what happened was the U.S. customs would make it harder to go through the paperwork to get from Cuba to the United States. And they would encourage Cubans to basically um, flee yeah. illegally. 
Yeah. Because they gave them, they gave them sanctuary. And um, the third thing, I mean, the second thing, um, Castro was also like, you know, and they, they, was, they was constantly hitting us over the head saying how Castro was a dictator. Yeah. And what we got to understand, Castro reign was also during the reign of Trujillo. I think I'm, I'm pronouncing his name. Trujillo. Trujillo. From Trujillo. Dominican Republic. Yeah, Trujillo. And that and he was responsible for the policy man. Yeah. So at, so, so, so at the same time, they were they were, were persecuting uh Castro in the media. Yeah, we had this dictator in uh the hey, Dominican Republic. Hey, Dominican Republic. Right. And wasn't Trujillo US back? Didn't the US back him? Yes, yes, yeah. yes he did. Yes, he did. And they backed him. Now in the third thing. While all these Latin countries were allowing drug trafficking through their borders, knowingly or unknowingly, um, Castro took a hard stance on drug trafficking because he knew that if he would allow drug trafficking to come through his borders, U- U.S. Would, would be hell on him. Yes. So, I mean, he, he went through measures where he even executed, um, by trial, he executed some high uh, Cuban officials. Yeah, and that basically lets you know how how even and level he was when it came to discipline in that country. And we must also understand that you know every country has blood on its hands. Yes, and, and he he had to be heavy handed in his rule because he was under constant attack by Western powers. Absolutely, so, you know it, it's real interesting. And I think people should really, really read and do their research sometimes. Real, so man, good information, man. Real good talk, man. Thank you for the call. My man dropped some real good heat, man. That was real talk. With 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 Castro, you know, he was in power around the same time Trujillo was over there in Haiti. Now, I keep saying Haiti, the Dominican Republic. And Trujillo was massacring Haitians over there. And again, dictatorship and assassinations it's perfectly fine as long as the u.s is backing it the u.s has no problem with murder and assassination and mass killings as long as it's their guy doing the damn killing so yeah castro he cleaned up a lot of shit that was going on he didn't let all the fuck shit go on in haiti and i keep saying in cuba like that he didn't let drugs and all that stuff come in there. He didn't. My man, he spent some real shit on that call, man. And that was very deep what he was saying about how they encourage people to come over illegally to the United States because it's too much work to go through the paperwork and all that old stuff. So somebody said it's the wet feet, dry feet policy. He said in, in, um, it was a Cuban adjustment act that essentially said anybody who fled Cuban into the, the U.S. should be allowed residency a year later. So that's the thing. Anybody in Cuba, if you go over to the U.S., hell, you don't even have to go through the paperwork and all that. If you float over there and you get there, then they, they bring you in. You'll get, they'll let you in. That's what the movie Scarface was about. Go look at the movie Scarface at the very beginning. Look at the very beginning of the movie Scarface when they had the Muriel Boat Lip and they were living in those camps. And Tony Montana and um, Manny, they didn't want to stay in the camp for a long time. Well, they, they would have had to stay there for a year. And what happened, if they carried out a hit, they could get their paperwork faster. So they wanted to speed up the process. Oh, yeah, don't apply to Haitians, though. Yeah, don't that that don't apply to Haitians. See, the, the Cubans, they got the complexion for the protection. Yeah, they don't let Haitians do that, though. They're like, yeah, we got another boat going right back over there. What do you keep, Mariel? I thought it was Mariel Mario the Mario boat lift. Okay. But yeah, but but look at the movie Scarface and all that stuff. They these movies tell you the truth. And look at some of the, the Godfather movies, how they talked about the mafia when the mafia was down there in in Haiti with Maya Lansky, and they were about to have all types of casinos popping and all that 
mafia and drug money and prostitution money, all that shit. It was about to be a rest haven for criminal activity. And everybody was about to get their cut on top while the black folks were going to get shitted on on the bottom and Castro clean all that up. And nobody talks about all that criminal activity before Castro. Castro's the bad guy because he was going to even everything out. That's the only reason. Oh, he's a dictator. Oh, the tyranny. Stop. Stop it. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's up, Sheree? This is Matt from Florida. Hey, man. How you doing, Matt? What's going on, man? I know you're on your cash so shit, man. I just want to ask you a quick question about a suspect guy as female. Okay, well, well, let's let's ask that a little bit later because I don't want to change subjects right now. So ask that a little later. Here's a look. Look, look, this look, look. Shit, 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 my bad. All right. Yeah, I, I don't want to get sidetracked. I do not want to get sidetracked right now. Hold on one second. I got commercials and shit playing in the background. Hold on. All right. Let's get a couple more calls. There's some shows I want to watch on TV tonight. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I got to watch the Soul Train Awards tonight. That's on tonight. What's Hello? up? Who's called? Hey, what's up? Who's this? Hey, Tariq. It's your girl, True Train. Um, I was calling because I know that you mentioned before that you were going to do a documentary on, you know, teaching us about racism. Yeah. Well, I was um, going to actually have classes on that, like a white supremacy yes. 101 class, and I'm still thinking about doing that. Yes. I think it's needed. I think too many people... Um, they just don't understand racism. So I was just, you know, trying to call and mention that. Where are you from? Are you from where are you from? You sound like you're from Philly. Where are you from? I'm actually from Connecticut. <laughs> okay, you sound like a Philly chick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what? I'm from Connecticut. I'm from New England. I have the tri state accent. Oh, um what yeah. the hell are you doing up there in Connecticut? Well, there's a lot of black folks from Connecticut. No, so. there is. Especially the part that I'm from, but I actually relocated. I'm in Atlanta now. Oh, okay. But yeah, exactly. So yeah, I came to your lecture um, here in Atlanta that you have. I arrived late, but oh, I did make it. Oh, good, um, good, good. But yeah. Um, I know when I went to, I did a lecture at Yale up in Connecticut. And I noticed in that, New that, Haven. Yeah, and that whole neighborhood is black. I didn't notice. I'm like, yeah. Well, yeah, that was interesting. That was very, oh, very be, interesting. Uh, yeah, New Haven's been on a FBI's 10 Most Dangerous Cities list um, probably for the past maybe five years on and off. Oh, wow. Uh, so yeah, it's it's not all you know wealthy and trees and everything that people think Connecticut is. Yeah, yeah, because they were like when the people yeah. from Yale was telling me to get there, I'm like, am I in the right? Is this the right school? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. It's real. It's yeah, real. It's real. It's real. But the brothers and sisters, they can, they <laughs> represent it out there. So shout out to the brothers and sisters in Connecticut. But I, I'm gonna keep yes. you posted. I will keep you posted on that on white supremacy 101 class. What you doing okay, out there great. in Atlanta? What you doing in Atlanta, by the way? I'm I'm a manager for a retail company, but now I'm in real estate. I'm I'm in real estate school, so I'm doing that. So I'll yeah. be doing that. Um, hopefully, transitioning from real, retail. Okay. But otherwise, I'm just trying to stay empowered. You know, um, you know, kind of you know, teaching everybody and just trying to keep my family abreast of what's going on. You know, I'm on Twitter strong. Yes. More or less. You know. Yes, so indeed. yeah. What's What's your page on More or less so we can look you up? It is, oh my gosh, um, <laughs> it's Londa, dot, it's Londa B, which is my, half of my name and my last name, middle initial. Londa B? So yeah, I'm on more. How, how, how do you spell Londa B? How do you spell it? L-L-O-N-D-A. Wait, wait, hold on. L, wait, spell it. What? Yep, L as in Larry, O-N-D-A. B? And then B for Brown. Okay. Londa yeah. B, is, is Londa B what? That's it. This is Blonde to be. On Morus. That's me. Everybody, if you got um, Morus, check out Blonde to be. <laughs> <laughs> I might know somebody to read. I might know somebody. That's good. Why you sound like a rapper from the 80s with Blonde to be? Well, I'm Lon to be, and I'm so sexy. I got milk coming out these big titties. I got some. <laughs> You are. <laughs> well, my name is Miss oh Londa, Londa B, and none of y'all hoes can fuck with me because I do it like this, I, I do it like that. I got a lot of hair on my cootie cat. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me stop messing with Londa. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I'm, I'm messing with you, Londa. <laughs> All right, Oh, you know what? One, I just, before you go, because I know you don't hate ramblers, yes. but you had did, um, um, a, a, like a question, um, thing you wanted, you were going to do or like imitate, um, I forgot what was the name of the, the broadcast that did like this questioning paneling thing and you were going to do your own and I had submitted a video. When is that coming out? Oh when yeah, 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 yeah. What happened? I wanted to do it, but it, it, it was too late. People were sending their videos weeks later and it just kind of killed the momentum because it was supposed to be a response mm -hmm. to a video at this, that just come out. So it was going to be a response to that, but people were sending the shit in late. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of killed the momentum. So I'm going to do something else. Oh, gotcha. right, right. So, so I'm going to do something else similar to that pretty soon, but I keep you posted. Gotcha. All right. Thank you for and the... tell the chat room, stop trying to clown on me. I'm about to go back in and get on them. <laughs> yes. Y'all go get Londa B's uh, Mora's page. <laughs> And I hope she got some nudes up there. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I got big old ass and titties and finesse. All y'all niggas want to see these breasts because I'm Londa B. I'm so sexy. <laughs> All right, Londa. Thank you, dear. All right. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Who's going? That's Londa B. All right. Londa B has an 80s female rapper name. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so the Morris Android is coming. This my, my people are still working on it. My people are still working on that. Y'all you know, go to Morris, M O O R U S dot com. If you're not on Morris, get on Morris now. Also, y'all need to go to my Tariq Live page on um, YouTube and um, subscribe to that page. So when I put up a video, you get the videos emailed to you automatically. All right. You get the videos emailed to you automatically. You dig? So she's the fourth member of Salt and Pepper. <laughs> Y'all get off Londa B. Uh, I got. I want to see what Londa B look like. Londa B probably got on a blonde wig and a kango. I want to see what Londa B look like. <laughs> I got to swear... I'm about to look up Londa B on Morris. Y'all following me on Morris, by the way. Y'all need to all follow me on the wonderful Morris app. I'm Tariq Nasheed on Morris. If it's crashing, you need to download the new version of it because the new version isn't crashing. We got an update, so you probably, you got to update yours because if it's crashing on you, you got to update it. Let's see what's cracking. Someone said she got a panda suit on. <laughs> Man. Okay, hold on. What's going on with more wrestling? Hold on one second. Now, let's see who else we got on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what up? What's going on? This is uh, Lo calling out of KC. Hey, Lo, what's going on with you, player? Uh, nothing much, uh, Brad. I was able to get through. Um, you know, uh, wanted to ask you about that, uh, what's going on in North Dakota. You know, yeah. they trying to lay that pipeline down. You know, um, uh, there's a lot of uh, you know suspicion that they polluting that area with some, you know, uh, whatever the hell they got going on. Yeah. Should we like ally with them? No, you know, <clears throat> no. No, they hold their own nuts. Okay. Hey, they, you know, I, I've said, hey, that's messed up what they're doing to the people over there. But black folks, don't you take your ass out there and get beat up and skeeted with water hoses and all that. For what? Look, I tweeted. I'm like, oh, that's bad. I said, hey, my heart goes out to you. But hold your own nuts. Don't yeah. you? I'm telling black folks the pipeline. Yeah, that's fucked up. But let them deal with that. Because when we're out here getting fucked up in the streets and all that, ain't nobody coming to our rescue. See, I'm in the hole yet. We got to start holding our own nuts and let other people hold their nuts too. Because we want to jump in the damn front line with everybody else. Nah. No thanks. Let me tell you something about some of these Native American tribes. Some of these, when the money start to be distributed, 
there's a treaty called the Treaty of 1866 where black people are supposed to get some of the money that's allocated to these Native American tribes. A lot of these tribes go out of their way to exclude black folks from some of that damn money. Hold your own motherfucking nuts. I ain't, no, no, no. I ain't going out there with mm. the whole fight. The, the, those, the, the 1866 treaty, we're supposed to be getting some of that paper. They go out of their way to say, well, the black folks aren't really a part of this tribe because they can't really prove their Native American ancestry. And you got a bunch of $5 Indian white supremacists pretending to be Indians on these dolls rolls and these Indian rolls owning these casinos. And some of that shit is supposed to go to black folks. None of these Native Americans are standing up saying nothing about that now. So hold your own nuts out there. Wear a coat. That's how we got to be, family. We can't run to everybody's rescue and then they shit on us when the resources and the money is allocated, dude. When we out here getting slaughtered and shot up and all that, everybody's kind of well, like, well, damn, we'll, we'll, we'll pray for you. It's that type of thing. But the minute something happens to them, hey, come on, black people, look at what they're doing to us minorities. No, 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 no. Hold your own nuts over there. We've had to hold ours, hold yours. And let me know when that money comes through if you're going to break off some of that 1866 treaty money like you're supposed to. You dig? All right, yeah. Man. Yeah. yeah, that's real. That's real. All right, thanks All for, right, thanks for the call, brother. Yeah. Yeah, that's bad. That's very bad what they're doing to the Native Americans out there with the pipeline. Very bad. But that ain't our problem as black people. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. That ain't our problem as black people. We got bigger fish to fry and nobody's helping us out. Now, let me tell you something. When we get the shit wrapped up over here, when we get these race soldiers off our ass and we stop them from killing us and allowing these race soldier juries to let it happen and we get some of that treaty money that we're supposed to get from these Native American tribes, I'll be the first one out there with you. If we get some of that treaty money together, allocated to the proper people it's supposed to be allocated to, that money is not supposed to go to some fake $5 fucking Indian white supremacist pretending to be Native American. That money is not supposed to go to them. A lot of that money is supposed to be allocated to black people because there's a lot of black people who marry into those Indian tribes. A lot of black people were enslaved by many Indian tribes. A lot of that money is supposed to go to us and the white supremacists assist you with systematically excluding us from the money that a treaty that's still in, in play right now, we're supposed to be getting and I'm supposed to jump out there in front of a water hose for you. No, thank you. No, thanks. Nah, let them $5 Indians go out there. You notice the $5 Indians ain't out there. You notice all the Native Americans are the dark, the real Native Americans out there now. The dark Native Americans out there getting them hose pipes and the uh, rubber bullets and all that. You got some liberal white people out, some sympathizers and all that. But those um, $5 Indian fake white Indians, they ain't out there. They're not out there getting them rubber bullets. Them, the ones who done finagled their way into owning casinos. They're not out there getting water hosed. They're nowhere to be found. Now it's like, hey, blacks, how you doing? Hey, come on over here. Black Lives Matter. Oh, no, 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 no. No, let, let's holler at me about that paper. Nah, holla at me about that paper. And that black folks, we need to start talking about them 1866 treaties, man. Brother Claude Anderson talks about that a lot. We need to really go into those 1866 treaties. Because a lot of that money is billions of dollars that go to Native American tribes. And boy, they... I mean, they literally come up with all types of schemes to keep that money away from black folks. You dig? 
Let's see who we got on the phone. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, what's up, Brother Tariq? This is Mark from Cleveland again. How hey, are you, bro. my friend? How you doing? What's going on with you, sir? Not much, man. Getting back to those uh, Native Americans. When they go to Flint, Michigan, and demand that black people get clean water, then I'll be marching out there in that field, too, brother. Yes, yes indeed. For real. Yes, indeed. You dig? Absolutely. Yes, Thank you for taking my call again, my friend, and I'm out. Peace. Thank you, sir. Yes, indeed, man. We always expected to... to Jump up for every every damn group. We no that no 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 no. People want to ally with us when it's convenient for them. No, black folks, we got to start saying no to people, and uh, we're just now getting the gist of that. Especially with Hillary Clinton, black folks in large numbers said no to Hillary Clinton. That was the smartest thing black people have done in years. Black people saying no to Hillary. Saying, no, I'm not going to vote for you just because you, you're you pointing out Trump and he's so bad. No, no. I'm not going to let you get my vote for nothing. You're not going to ally with me while it's convenient for you and you're not giving me nothing. So, no. Just like with these white Cubans. Hey, viva, viva. Castro is evil. Come on, you got to celebrate because he was evil. No, your enemy is not my enemy. Your enemy is not my enemy. Castro did a lot of good stuff for black people globally and African nations globally. I ain't hating on them because we're going to talk about somebody being mistreated. Oh, we're going to have to look at the mistreatment here and do something about that. We're not going to overlook that. I'm not going to look over all the dead bodies by the race soldiers over here, over at some damn Castro. No, I'm not going to look past the white supremacist race soldiers to Castro. No, we're going to deal with all of them if we're going to deal with it. Those Cubans down in Florida, them white Cubans, are some of the biggest Trump supporters out there in Miami. But, but Castro is evil. Oh, viva Trump, viva Trump. They voting for Trump. Fuck out of here. And I'm supposed to be on your side because you you trying to play the minority. And we're minorities. But you get around them Trump people, you white. Nah, we got to understand the con games these people try to run on us, man. They try to run a lot of con games on us. Yeah, Castro never did shit bad to me. Shit, Castro has offered to help black Americans in many cases, even now. Like I said earlier, black folks can go down to Cuba and study medicine for free. They ain't done that to us here. Man, let's get another call. We got somebody in Milwaukee. What's up? Who's calling? Yeah, this is Alex from uh, Milwaukee. Hey, man, what's going on with you, fam? I'm all right. Just watching you on there. Um, I just got a question. Uh, you know, I, I've been down with the cause and everything <clears throat> pretty much my whole life. I experience racism all the time. And um, I just want to know, like, because uh, I'm mixed. My mom is white. My dad is black. Right. And I get a lot of flack from both sides. You know what I mean? Uh, whenever I try to stand up and and, you know, do what's right for us. And sometimes I get, you know, oh, you a half breed, you know, you a life, and, you know. What do I got to, uh, you know, say to these people that <clears throat> attack me like that? I know the white people want to yeah, attack yeah. me. You so if you're, you if you, now the white supremacists, no matter what class of white supremacists you're around, they're going to have that mentality. With black people, the only black folks who are like, oh, nigga, you're a half breed, those are usually, you know, low level, dusty type of niggas. You don't have middle class or well-to-do black people on that shit because that's a way for dusty niggas to try to feel like they can kind of um, have some type of black prioritized uh, mentality over you because these niggas feel disenfranchised. So that's dusty nigga shit because that nigga logic, 
we're all under a system of white supremacy. There ain't no such thing as a mixed person in a system of white supremacy. You have white and you have non-white. And if you're a non-white person, you are in the system and a victim of white supremacy. So arguing with another victim, because that's what dusty niggas like to do, argue with other victims on the bottom of the slave ship, as um, Neely Fuller says. So you don't want to have yeah. these... You don't want to have these slave ship arguments with niggas. You want to get around black folks who are like, look, we in this shit together. What can we do to empower ourselves? That's who you need to start being around. You feel me? Yeah, I hear you. Thank um, you, brother. Hey, I I more, no more questions. I got one more question. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead. You know, go the, the brother Seville that got shot this summer, I've been trying to get on uh, NPD about releasing that body cam. What can I do to get them to release the body they're cam? Not they're, gonna, release they're not only they're not going to release they're not going to release that body cam because number one, the cam shows that the um, it probably wasn't even a black cop who shot him. They said it was a black cop who shot him, which I don't believe. So they're not going to release that tape. Also, the so called cop who shot Seville. That dude got arrested in some kind of male prostitution shit. Well, he was right. He was prison now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he, is he out of jail now? No, nah, he's still in jail. He had, he was raping dudes or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dude was raping other men or some shit. But see, I, I don't believe that. I think that's that's uh, that's a distraction. I think that's just a smoke screen so we can go after that. It's like we don't forget about what happened to Silver. Sil 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 that's bull. Well, that's I, I know. I, I I just don't think that he had a gun. Nor was he pointing at because he didn't have a gun. Right. I'm telling you, why, why else would he, would they not release the, the footage? Yeah, I, don't but I, I don't even think the black dude shot the guy. Not only did Seville, I don't think Seville had a gun. I don't even think he was running. I think that that dude was assassinated by a white race soldier. They got this some random black dude as a who's a, supposed to be a cop as the fall guy. Now this damn cop is in jail for raping niggas. So that is some corrupt shit all the way around, man. And they are never releasing that footage, man. They they lied. I mean, this is y'all. This is Sheriff Clark territory, man. You got a a, a, a black white supremacist sheriff out there. So it's corrupt yep. as hell out there, man. But anyway, man, thanks for the call, I man. Know. Excuse me. Yeah, man. Crazy as hell, dude. It is crazy. But again, man, um, when we do this documentary on, on Haiti, we're going to touch a lot on, on Cuba, too. Because you say, I'm glowing. Yeah, yeah, man. I've been eating right and the whole shit. Getting my, my, my cardio on. Getting all the, the junk... You know, now Thanksgiving, you know, we had pies around this motherfucker. I got it in. What's up, Tia Ray? Uh, that video, I've seen the video you're talking about. Number one, it wasn't a black child. Number two, nobody knows where that is. Nobody knows the, the truth about that video. Nobody knows where it happened. So that, that video is kind of questionable. But yeah, they, they keep saying... Some some white supremacist website posted the title "A Black Kid Gets Raped in a Jail by a White Officer," but the person, the the, the female in the video, was not black. Man, yeah, man, I I, I got to get it in because I got a couple of movies coming up, so you know I, I got to get it in. I had to get all that junk. Shit, yeah, they had to get my C.T. Fletcher on. Yeah, nigga, I be getting it in. I'm like, I command you to grow, motherfucker. <laughs> I command you don't control me, bitch. You know, C.T. Fletcher be cussing his muscles out. I love C.T. Fletcher, man. He's, he's from Compton. My man is gangster with it. C.T. Fletcher be cussing his own muscles out. <laughs> grow, bitch. Grow for me, you punk hoe. I command you, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, man. CT gets it in. Man. <laughs> Sock passe, ma boule. So, yeah, I gotta, um, we gotta go back to filming. I've been wanting to film, like, I want to get moved first, because, you know, I'm moving right now. Yeah, and then I still want to get down to 200 pounds. I'm a, my, my, my daughter's like, that, that's gonna, you're going to be too damn skinny, Dad. I don't want you little like, no, no, no I want to get down to 200 fucking pounds. 
I'm six four. I'm like two sixty, two sixty three, something like that. I want to get down to goddamn two. I'm six four. I want to get down to two hundred pounds on y'all ass. You dig? That's how I want to get it in. It's skinny than a motherfucker. That's how I want to do it. Let me see who's calling. What's up? Who's calling? Hey, Terry, it's Don. What's your name? Don. Don, where are you calling from, Don? It's not like you, you're an African brother. Where are you calling from, Don? Yeah, I'm from Zambia, uh, but I'm in, I'm in Canada. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So um, um, how long have you been in Canada from Zambia? I've been here for five years now. Oh, okay. Now, what what's going on in Zambia? Man, Zambia, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> we had a new leader. So last year, there was an election, and it became corrupt and stuff, and... There was a new guy that took over, so it's it's kind of like wishy washy right now, you know, politics in Africa. Yeah, yeah. So is is there like a lot of poverty? Is the poverty rampant over there? What's the deal? Um. Well, the the majority of people there live on a dollar a day or less. Oh damn, damn. But the good thing is that despite all the poverty and all the tribalism, it's one of the only African countries that's never had a war before. Oh wow, wow! And you guys are right. Never had a civil war. Oh wow, wow! What's um, what's their biggest export over there? What do they export the most over there? Uh definitely copper. Copper, okay. Yeah, second highest in the world. Oh wow, wow! So who's profiting off all that copper? Well, right now there's a Canadian company actually uh, near my village, my father's village, which is importing or obtaining a lot of the copper that's going on in the area right now. So Canada is benefiting a lot. Switzerland is benefiting a lot. So <laughs> you have all these countries from Europe and North America that are benefiting a lot from the resources. So African people, they are not getting anything. Okay. So, so do these companies, are they sending in their own people to mine this stuff? Uh, how are they doing it? No, they're using the African miners to mine the stuff. But when it comes to paying them the salaries, they, they really rip them off. Oh, okay. So, and the government taxes uh, those companies very lightly. Oh, okay. So the government, is they, they must have put some puppets in the, the government over there. That's how they do. Man, the, the, oh, the politicians are getting money in that. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's what they do. They And the, and the book, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, it talks about that, how these Western nations will put a puppet African leader in there to allow all the resources to be drained, sent yes. over there to, to Canada and Switzerland, yes. and only people getting rich are the puppet leaders, and the rest mm -hmm. of the population don't get nothing. See, mm -hmm. and that's something mm -hmm. that, I, pe that people like yeah. Castro was trying to help liberate these African nations so they didn't have to go through that. And and that's something that we globally as African people, we're going to have to eliminate that where African nations are being exploited for their resources and the African people don't get anything. Um, yes, yes. So how's the, In how, fact, how, uh, yeah. when you mentioned Castro, um, it's ironic because America played a part in eliminating um, Patrick Lumumba. Yes, they did. And then they replaced him with Mahutu Seseko, who, who was a tyrant and he was one of the worst African dictators. They never said anything about him. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Just like with um, um over in Zimbabwe, Robin Mugabe, they love talking about how he's a dictator and a tyrant. But hell, Ian Smith before him, when, when it was Rhodesia, he was a white supremacist. They were terrorizing the people over there. They never talk about his human rights violations. So yes. It, it's, it's, yes. In fact, Ian Smith used to send bombs over to my country so my parents used to scramble around and their parents would run away whenever the bombs from Zimbabwe would come over because Zambia was keeping uh, freedom fighters from South Africa and Zimbabwe. Oh, wow. 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 That's crazy, man. Hey, man. Good call, man. Good good phone call. Good information, brother. How's everything going Thanks, for you? Man. How are things going for you in Canada, brother? 
Ah, I can't. They just, you know, <laughs> trying to get my papers, man. <laughs> there you go, man. But, hey. yes, yeah, but I'm trying to balance it off, you know, just learning from you and how white supremacy works over here. It's, it's an eye opener because for an African, before you come over here, you have this perception that, you know, it's all rosy and everything out here in the West. Yeah. Although Canada is very friendly and Canada is it's, it's different. It's not like America, although the white supremacy is still there, but it's not in your face. Yeah. However, it's um, it's it's a, it's, a, it's something to learn about. So, yeah, yeah. Now, now, what do you do out there in Canada? What kind of work are you doing? Uh engineering. Oh, cool, cool. And what what do you do as a hobby? Hobbies. I read a lot and uh, soccer. All right. Uh, yeah. Do you have you you meeting the ladies over there? <laughs> well, right now, I'm living in a really isolated place. So. The ladies there are hard to come by. But when I move back to Toronto, I'll probably get them. There you go. Because I got some footage of you. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. You boy Banks. And this track is dedicated to all the ladies out there who like to go to the movies, you know, especially you, girl. Let me take you to the movies, sure. I'm sure later on you will be my baby. Let's sit down and just be. I had to get you on that one. I had to get you. <laughs> All right. All right, man. But thank Thanks. you for thank you for the call, brother. Thanks. All, All right, man. Thanks. Good call, brother. I like that, brother. I like brothers. That's what I want. I want more brothers from Africa to call up and let us know what's going on in their countries, man. I love that. I like more brothers from Africa to call up and let us let us know what what's popping. <laughs> That brother was cool. Brother from Zambia, the brother is cool. Man, man, man. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> All right. All right, let me get up out of here, man. We got a... Oh, man, we in here deep. Anyway, man, y'all need to go go to my YouTube page. Um, Go to my YouTube page, Um, Tariq Live. That's my YouTube page. Go to TariqElite.com to get all my gear, T-shirts, all that stuff. we got some new shirts coming soon. Go to um, HiddenColorsFilm.com to get Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3. That's HiddenColorsFilm.com. Go to YouTube, not YouTube, Twitter. Follow me at Tariq Nashi. Follow me on Instagram at Tariq Elite. All right, let me get up out of here, y'all. It's been real.